Okay, so next up we have Kastaba Agarwal. Thanks, Duncan. Uh, am I audible? Okay, so uh, first I'd like to thank the organizers, like everyone, for uh, this wonderful opportunity to um, speak here. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful one, one and a half weeks with all the wonderful lectures and talks. Uh, so uh, a brief introduction, I'm Kausta Bagarwal. I am a graduate student at uh, IUPUI, which happens to be a PT symmetric institute. Let me just show you how. So if you operate the parity operator, you do this, this operation, and you change i to minus i, cancel the negatives, and then <laughs> get IUPUI back. Just a little PT symmetric joke for you all of you. And uh, so this work has been done in, with, uh, uh, with uh, Professor uh, Yogesh Jogrekar and uh, Rajiv Pathak, Dr. Rajiv Pathak. And um, so I'll be discussing with you the, uh, how, how you can s enhance the PT symmetric threshold uh, by using some simple techniques. Uh, So I'm going to keep my talk short and discreet, pun intended. And uh, so uh, let me just jump into that. OK, so I'll just briefly give you an overview. So I'll just discuss the 1D system that has been already dealt with before. And um, ju just give you a brief overview of that. And then dive into the two-dimensional systems that we actually studied, and uh, uh, then uh, or tell you about some experimental realizable system, experimentally realizable systems, and where you can actually tune your PT threshold, and then finally summarize the entire thing. All right. So uh, when we talk about these one-dimensional tight binding models, we are actually what what we are actually keeping in mind is uh, uh, optical waveguides or resonate, uh, um, coupled resonators, where you, which are which are coupled in, you know, in the, uh, the nearest neighbors. And uh, we have just introduced one pair of gain loss impurities. And uh, so here's the Hamiltonian for which, uh, for, for the system. And of course, I mean, in the Z direction into the, into the board is what is uniform. But we are actually chain, uh, we have this coupling constant, which is in between two sides. Of course, the gray ones are the neutral sites, and the blue one is the gain site, and the red one is the loss site. OK, and we also assume the open boundary condition system for this, uh, open boundary conditions. All right, so uh, what is the PT threshold for this case? So every time you have um, a configuration, so you have when the impurities are farthest apart, you take them closer to each other. And for each configuration, you will have some threshold. And what, again, we know that what threshold means is that when this non-Hermitian strength is increased beyond a point, all the energies, uh, I mean, two energy, uh, one pair of energy eigenvalues become complex conjugate pairs. All right, so here's what was done previously. So uh, this is a paper by Jogek et al. And what they saw was that for even in odd cases, for when the uh, gain loss impurities are farthest apart, you have this threshold over here, which is denoted by this. And again, for, the, for when they are closest together, for even in odd cases, of course, in the odd case, you have one neutral side in between. In this case, it's, it's, uh, it's half, but in this case, it's, since there's direct coupling, you have uh, the threshold equal to one. So it doesn't really matter, oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter how, how many sites you put in, uh, it, it is always uh, enhanced at the boundary. So that was one uh, major thing that they found. But you can only increase it to, uh, when J, when, uh, to, uh, to the interside uh, inter coupling. So is there a way? So uh, when, you have a pair, when, when you have these pair of waveguides, you can't experimentally, or uh, when fabricating it, you can't get any close to each other. So there is a physical limitation to when you can increase the threshold. So what we, what we want to show is that can we actually do it in a very, in, in a subtle way or in a different way, uh, what was done before. 
can we increase the threshold by not having them uh, not too close to each other, but have a, uh, yeah, okay. So we have the same model here, where we have the same one-dimensional chain, but now we have coupled them with Hermitian chains, Hermitian or neutral chains. Why do I, so her, why do I say Hermitian? Because they, are, they don't have any pair of gain-loss impurities. So uh, the, the JY coupling is actually stronger than the JX coupling. And uh, that's what we want to emphasize. It's the strong coupling limit. And uh, here's our good old friend, the Hamiltonian. So uh, this is the two-dimensional Hamiltonian system. And uh, this is a non-Hermitian part where I've written it this way, uh, of course, the gain-loss sites. But now I still keep the PD symmetry as the one that I had previously, uh, that was previously done. That is only interchanging the x in, uh, in the x direction. So if you have the gain side here, the reflection symmetry will be along the x direction. Okay, so this is what numerically that you saw. This is your new, usual uh, one-dimensional system. Uh, and so you see the same trend. But now you switch on this uh, strong coupling, and what you see is a clear enhancement of the PT threshold. And again, if you increase, if you, so this is the number of chains. If you see that there's a, I've increased it by five chains extra. Now if I have another seven chains, you have another enhancement of the threshold. So this was, this was exciting to see that uh, just simply by coupling it to neutral chains, you were able to enhance the threshold considerably. But now if you just consider these, these points here, let me just, just for example, that means when the impurity is the furthest apart, what you see, as, and if you, uh, of course, map it um, as a function of the number of chains you increase, you see that there's a clear, there's a clear um, trend that you see that's a linear trend. So you can now find a scaling law for this. And can we do it, can we do it analytically? Of course we can. Uh, and this is how we do it. So, uh, but first we want to assume that um, the strong coupling limit. So we actually want to uh, emphasize that in what is the strong coupling. So we say that uh, the band, so if you see the band structure of this um, two-dimensional uh, system, I mean the Hermitian, the Hermitian case, you see that uh, under uh, stronger JY coupling, the, all the bands are separated out. And, this is, uh, and each level in the band is given by this. Of course, so, uh, so what I denote the first index as the uh, energy level index in a particular band, and the next uh, after the comma is the band index. So you have this expression where you can, where we can, okay, slightly say that, okay, we are, that this is the strong coupling regime. Anything, so we need our JY by JX to be greater than this expression. And of course, like any PT symmetric system, we can actually squash this down into a subspace of just two levels. And that's what we did. And so this is what the effective Hamiltonian looks like uh, near the PT threshold. Uh, so that's why, that's why we can do it. Um, and so, e, so what we are assuming here is that the energy levels are only becoming degenerate in one particular band. And that's why it's, uh, it's just EP, uh, EPQ and EP plus 1Q. And that's why uh, we do this. So here's the math and uh, of course, uh, delta is being given by this um, overlap with the, the operator, and the, you can calculate that uh, integral as this, and of course the norm a, is, a is a normalization constant, and uh, it reduces down to this very simple expression over here. And now we can calculate the PT threshold for n chains. So now if you compare this with uh, a single chain, this is the expression that you get. And this is uh, exciting because now we can actually see that it is proportional to the number of chains coupled. What is more interesting is to notice that, I'll just go back a few slides. Yeah. So you see that there is, after a point, it starts to break down. And that's where, I mean, of course, uh, like I explained before, you need the strong coupling limit to actually um, because then the bands will start overlapping and then you, you get those, you start seeing degeneracy and that's why the threshold might reduce. So, 
All right. So let me just look at, uh, let me just give you an overview of some exciting stuff that uh, we saw uh, in experimentally realizable systems. Now, all these experimentally realizable systems are mostly dimers and trimers. Is there a way to tune uh, the dimer and trimer models just by uh, this model that we have for you? Um, and what we saw, of course, I mean, in the strong coupling limit, we do see this enhancement, but something really interesting popped up. So what you see is it's not just for the strong coupling it's enhanced, it's actually enhanced for when jy by jx is equal to 2. And uh, it's actually tripled. So it goes from 0. So this, is, this part is actually the symmetric case wherein uh, your uh, JY, jx is equal to jy. That's, that's this point. And uh, it, actually, it increases to three times the threshold when you actually uh, when you uh, double the coupling, or the vertical coupling. And so this was exciting to see. And uh, maybe if, if this time I can actually show you a movie of um, this dimer, if when you increase the JY coupling, how the, um, how the energy levels come together. Uh, OK, so now this is just for a single uh, neutral chain attached to a gain loss site. Uh, what if I put another neutral site on the top? What you see now here is that you don't have to go too far also now into the JY ratio, the, the coupling ratio. You just have to go to root 2. Now, I don't know whether this is coincidental that the square root sine and the square root 2 have something to do with each other, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so this, these are the diamond models, and again, similarly, for, okay, so if the gain loss sites are on the top chain, you don't see quite uh, three times the, the, I mean, you don't see it tripling out, but of course, in the strong coupling regime, it, they do saturate to um, this value over here. All right, so the, the trimer chains, again, similar situation. When you increase, when you have uh, this Hermitian chain, strongly coupled to the PT symmetric chain, you see a strong coupling. And in this case, if you see the, for, for the blue line, for the symmetric case, there's again, again there's, in this case, it's an, there's an enhancement. So this was interesting to see. OK, so I'll just summarize. It was fairly brief. Uh, I'll just summarize what was done. And so what we saw was that adding neutral chains to a PT symmetric lattice kind of enhances your the threshold, and this a high asymmetry has a strong renormalization. It strongly renormalizes your um, threshold. Uh, of course, in the 2D, uh, in the simple cases where the experimentally realizable cases, you are able to see three times the threshold for for a particular value of the ratio coupling coupling ratio. So this provides actually a way of tuning your uh, PT threshold as as per your as for your liking, if you like. And, but uh, although these systems are, I mean, uh, we have assumed tight binding models, investigation into other models can, of, of course, uh, give a deeper understanding into uh, such systems. And uh, with that, I thank you and take questions. Are there any questions? Uh, so I am a bit confused uh, in the sense that uh, you, uh, so does your 2D system has a PT symmetry? I mean, it has, to, P should be like uh, X going to minus X and Y going to minus Y, right? Uh, and the, uh, Not Y going to minus Y, it's just, the parity operation is just on the X, so it's just a... So that's the thing you have, right? Yes. Uh, it's not a full uh, parity operation. It's a partial parity operation where I'm just interchanging x to minus x and not y to minus y. But that also gives you some real spectrum and so on. When, uh, uh, no, I, I have no. I, I don't. I, I don't quite get the question. So, uh, so in this case, is it real? No. So I mean, uh, this PT, this two cross two, this PT symmetric uh, thing has uh -huh. uh, this real uh, eigenvalues and. Uh, yes. So, so within if the threshold, I mean, if the gamma yeah. is less than threshold, yes. So your 2D system also has uh, that kind of. Can I ask, so 
is this is the exponent if you plot your eigenvectors do they mainly just live somewhere else other than near the two sites that have the dissipation and the gain or the eigenvectors uh actually i've not we have not, uh, we have not i mean in a sense it just sounds like you're turning down your the effect of your non-hermitian part because the wave function can live elsewhere yes yes it can it can so it can not only live so it's like in the sushi figure it's like on the, on the edges but not uh, in this case it can live um, mm. and, and would you get the same effect if you put disorder on your lattice then you would confine your your wave function in various places but you know they, they don't have access to the so you mean uh, some the Anderson localization yeah Right, so uh, I think they have a, a there, there is a paper wherein they have actually put, uh, they have actually used a ladder model wherein you have a quasi one dimensional, you have infinitely long chains, but you have two chains. So wherein, but they put gain loss impurities on each side and then they calculate the Lyapunov of exponents. And yeah, sure, I mean, you can, you can have that, that kind of thing. But we are not doing, we're not introducing disorder, but uh, yeah. But you should look at the eigenvectors and see where they sit. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Any more? Oh, yep. <clears throat> Earlier discussions uh, related to the questions. So you see that PT symmetry, uh, this partial PT symmetry is quite misnomer. It's basically when we want to have PT symmetry, the transformation matrix determinant should be equal to minus one. Okay. So, and there are various possibilities. So one of them you are using is that X goes to Y, Y goes to X. So the transformation matrix is like Sigma X, Pauli spin matrix. So determinant is minus one and there are other choices also. So it's not partial PT symmetry. X goes to Y, Y goes to X is a PT, sym a PT symmetric system. Sure, yeah. Okay, well, let's thank the speaker.